times, and I'm going to continue doing this. I'm planning on teaching next week as Dr. Holman, our senior pastor, is uh, down in Texas right now. And just continue to lift him up in prayer. Amen. And uh, so I'm going to continue teaching on this, how uh, we're to walk by faith and not by sight. And that's something we need to learn as Christians. It can kind of be a tough thing because we live in this world. We're, we're kind of we're a, a natural being, right? We feel when we pinch, it hurts, right? When we see, hey, I can't walk through this. But he calls us new creations in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So I now need to walk as a new creation, right? As a new, brand new creation, like never before been existed, I'm brand new. As soon as I accept Jesus Christ into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior, I need to turn from my ways and come and start walking as a child of the, of the living God. Amen? So I need to walk as faith. Now, as ministers, pastors, uh, when we get up and share the word of God, it's not, well, oh, man, what, what do I come up with? What, what, what do you have for me? Or what, what, what can I teach on? Or what haven't I taught on in a while? We seek God. And when we seek God and we hear his voice and he speaks to us through his word and gives us messages, it's not just for something to do. or to, it, it builds our faith, but it's for all of us, right? As the word says, the, the pastors are the shepherds. And we are all the sheep, right? We are the sheep to learn. And we listen to our shepherd's voice to learn and to grow and to mature. Amen? Hey, don't go over by the cliff. You might get hurt. Come on back, right? It, and as a pastor, we love you. We absolutely love you. We pray for you every day. And so when we get up and preach, I, I hope that you're hearing ready to receive and ready to be changed. You know, Dr. Holman brings these messages. I'm serious. We are blessed. Yeah. We are blessed. And when he brings forth these messages, like on crazy faith, and that's obviously God wants us to start walking in some crazy and wild radical faith. When God starts teaching and, and showing him on how we need to change, hey, that's probably a word for us, right? It's not just for him. It's not like, guess, guess what I read this week, guys? Guess what I got in this great? I can't wait to see what God's going to do for me. No, it's for y'all. It's for the sheep to change, to grow, because we want to see you blessed and highly favored. It's what the word says. So I need to be a doer of the word not a hearer only. Right? The Bible says, man, the hearers only, they're only deceiving themselves. Right? You're getting into a religious vein where if I just do this, and I just do this, and I just... Let the traditions of men, the Bible says, make the word of God of no effect. Man, and I tell you what, if I happen to have a, a two-edged sword on my side, I'd probably want to use it knowing what's out in the world, trying to seek and devour me. Amen? Seeking, trying to devour you, steal, rob, and kill from you. Lie about you. Oh, no. I got a two-edged sword that says no weapon formed against yes. me is going to prosper. Yes. I got a two-edged sword that says no weapon formed against me prospers, and any tongue that rises up in judgment against me, it's brought down. It is condemned. I have a word that says when sickness and disease tries to come on my body, God's word says it dri is driven far from my midst. Yes. Amen. Yes. So I declare the word of God, but it's to live by faith. And so when we come to hear these words, be ready to adapt to that word. Be ready to change that word. Dr. Holman's in a series right now on the matters of the heart. Yeah, it's awesome. Man, I tell you what, don't just, and, and, and here, here's, here's something, and I'm just sharing this because I want you to know how much we love you. I, I'm serious, we cherish you. We really, really do. I, I've heard people say that when they come to church, and obviously nobody here, but people say, when I go to church, it's like the pastor is just preaching right at me. Yeah. Never, ever, 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 ever in a thousand years, at least preachers that are spirit-filled and uh, men, truly men of God, are preaching at someone. They hear from God, and if you're feeling that prick, if you're feeling that piercing, that's the word of God working. Right. It's the word of God working. It's the Holy Spirit stirring even right now. Stirring right now that's saying, oh, when you're thinking, oh, man, this person should be here for church. Who's that thought from? Yeah. Say, no, 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 no. I would love for them to be here, but selfishly, I'm going to receive everything that God has for me. And I need to be. I need to grab a hold of everything that God has for me. I'm here today to receive. 
Amen? Amen. Or maybe you hear something that says, oh, I can't believe he's going to say, I know he's going to say that because I did this and I, and this is what happened and I know he's going to say this, but I know that's why he said it. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the Holy Spirit. And that's something that, it's almost like he's, he's molding our heart and it ugh, doesn't always feel good. Sometimes he's smoothing off those rough edges yeah. with some sandpaper that's, oh, God, you're stretching me here. I don't know. But no, 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 no. It's for the better. It's for the good. Because that's God's purpose and plan for your life. It's for good, not of evil. To bless you and to see you increased. You're highly favored. We can think, well, man, I declare that all the time. It doesn't feel like it. Well, then I gotta press in some more. I gotta grab a hold by faith. So that's why we gotta take steps of faith. Amen? Amen. We need to be a people that are so motivated by faith in what God has called and asked us to do. I should probably get to my notes. <laughs> steps of faith activate the miraculous power of God. I've taught this the last few times I was able to share, right? Jesus recognizes faith, doesn't he? Jesus recognizes faith. Dr. Holman shared this when school first started. He comes in and addresses the student body. And he does for a few days or a couple weeks. And when he's, when he's able to, he comes in and addresses the student body. But this is the first day of school. And he's teaching to the children to try to get them to understand. And obviously as a children's minister for as long as he was, he's very good at what he does. And he's coming in, he's talking to the students, and I'm listening and he starts talking about faith. And I'm like, okay, faith. The first day of school, we're talking about faith. Where is he going with this? And what faith is? And he asks the students, what is faith? You know, and they're, first day of school, are you kidding me? We have a test. <laughs> I don't know what faith is. What do, what do you want me to say here? Come on. And so we had some of the students, you know, sharing. And okay, this could be faith. Yeah, this could be faith. And it got to the point of faith is just showing up. Your eyes, faith is as simple as showing up. You came to church today and it took faith. You came to church today to receive. You came to show up. It's hunting season, right? If I don't go hunting, how many deer am I going to get? None. I'm going to get exactly what I hunted for. Nothing. Right? If I don't aim at anything, how am I going to hit it? Right? And so God wants me to, and I know we live in the Northwoods and we see him run across our roads all the time and we're obviously not aiming for those deer, right? Hedge of protection, thank you Jesus for safety and safe travels, no matter where we drive in from, praise the Lord. But if I'm not aiming at something, I'm not going to hit it. So I had better show up and when I do show up, that activates the miraculous power of God in our lives. How many want the miraculous power of God to work in your life? That's why you're here. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them, that's why we're here. And he got to share that with the students. Just coming. Just showing up is faith. You might think, well, that's a small step. But it's a step. It's a step. And you have to start somewhere. With what God wants you to do. You know, I taught last week in children's church. And that's what we're teaching on faith right now, as a matter of fact. And last week, my message was faith speaks. So I asked the students, I said, you know, what is faith? And what's the first thing a second grader shoots out? Faith is showing up. They're hearing it. They're hearing it. They know faith is showing up. Turn with your, me and your Bibles to James chapter 1. How many of you in here, you know what, don't even raise your hand. Because every one of us in here, God has asked of, us of something, right? God has asked us to do something. God has asked us to take a step of faith. God has asked us to do something. Witness, share our faith, share our testimony, anything. Maybe pay for a meal. He's asked to open a door for someone, asked us to pray for someone, right? He gives us opportunities to take steps of faith. And how many times have we said, oh, I just don't have the time? How many times have we said, oh, God, that, I, that can't be God? I mean, I'm, I'm feeling worse than what they look like. Why isn't someone praying for me? But it says this in James chapter 1. 
It says this, but let him ask in faith, right? With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and unstable in all of his ways. And man, for some of us, we think, wow. You know, I've been praying for opportunities and I've been praying for op uh, just situations to take place and I just, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. But man, there's opportunities every day. Amen. Sometimes we just need to take that step of faith to, okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this as a sign that it is an opportunity and I'm going to take this step and talk with someone. I'm going to take this step and pray with someone. I'm going to... And you have to initiate that. That's faith. Man, in your head, you're thinking a million thoughts. And the biggest one is, I don't know. I'm just not sure. But man, that's what I shared the last couple weeks or the last couple times that I got to share. How it's not faith in ourselves. It's not our ability or how good we can speak. Or how good we know how to pray. It's our confidence in His ability. In who he is. So I press into him, and the more confident I can confident I can be in him, the more stepping out is the, I see the opportunities. I can make these opportunities and I can turn them into blessing. I take these opportunities. When I first started in the food pantry, man, it was like an apple was in my throat. Because I knew I was gonna have to pray for some of these people. And I'm thinking, Lord, I don't know what to pray for these people. Obviously, they have need. I'm giving them the food. That should be enough, right? But I needed to take steps of faith. I needed to take steps of faith. And yes, for them and for their benefit, but for mine as well. God wants my faith to grow and to increase in who he is. To see the miraculous take place. You see, we're, we live in a natural world, but we need to operate in a spiritual world. We need to operate this way and look for opportunities for God to do the miraculous. I don't want to be double-minded. I don't want to be tossed by the sea to and fro. If I say I'm a man of faith, I better act like it. You say you're a woman of faith, you better act like it. You better show it. We can say, say, say I have faith. But what do we see in scripture verses? You show me your faith. You show me your faith. You show it. So I want to encourage you this morning. Again, I don't want to beat the Bible over your head and think that you're not doing enough. Think that you're not. But I want to encourage you to get to a place to truly receive the miraculous power of God at work in your life. I want to see you blessed. I know you're highly favored. I know what God's doing in your life. I see the potential that God has for you. So I want to encourage you to take a, stick, take a step of faith. This morning, let's take a look at David in 1 Samuel. Faith is showing up, doing what God's asked of us, and expecting God to do the miraculous. Pressing into his presence. Don't stop. Don't think, well, that didn't work, so I quit. No, you press in. You press in. You press in. You know when that, that, that uh, the bracelet came out that said the WWJD, and what would Jesus do? They came up with all kinds of acronyms. I really like the, that push. Pray until something happens. Don't stop. You pray until something happens. You press in until something happens. You persevere until something happens. You press into who God is until God shows up. Because I want the living God. I want the God who spoke into existence all of creation. Who spoke into existence our very being. I don't want to just read about him. Say, well, that's cool. I want to see it take place in my life. I want to watch God perform the miraculous. The things that are impossible with man are possible with God. So I declare it. I, I pray it. I speak it. A new existence every day. Let's take a look at David. Now, we all kind of know the story of David, and I'm going to give you a little backstory here. David was just a shepherd boy, right? And you all know this story, but we're going to dive in and, and, and sink our teeth in here this morning. Because David was a shepherd boy, and he loved the Lord, right? He was the youngest son of Jesse. He shepherded the sheep, right? Just what he kind of fell on him. All right, you're the youngest. You get out there, you go, right? But he learned to worship God. He learned to press into God. He learned the voice of God and who God was. And so when Saul all of a sudden got this spirit that was just antagonizing him and bothering him and would rise up in his life, he's like, what do I do? And someone heard about 
David that knew how to play the harp and could play. And when he played, man, it was, there was just such peace. Why? Because in his presence, there's fullness of joy, right? He learned how to worship God, get into his presence. And so there David was. He was with Saul. He knew the king already. Saul was being tormented. David would come in, would worship the Lord. The torment would go away. The, the presence of God would come in that place. And here we are. We're picking it up. Uh, obviously, the Philistines came in. Goliath is there. He's defying the armies of the living God. He's mocking them. He's coming out every day. He goes, you send me your best man. You come and fight me. Let's just do this so no one else has to die. You dogs, you no good for nothing, so and so's, right? David hears about this stuff. Now, David's just a small boy. But David, God rises up on the inside of him because he knows who his God is. Not his ability, not how great he is. He wasn't a skilled uh, swordsman. He wasn't skilled in battle. But it rose up on the inside of David. So let's take a look at 1 Samuel 17. We're going to read verses 32 all the way through 51. Bear with me. Here we go. Uh, and we'll be pausing here and there just to kind of take a look at what's going on. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail him because of your servant. We'll go and fight with this, this Philistine. Basically, I'll go do it. I'm going to do this. Saul said to David, you're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you're a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. I mean, he's trying to open his eyes like, hey, come on now, kid. What, what are you thinking? Third, verse 34 says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his, uh, used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. So when I first read this and Saul is saying, but you're just a youth, how can you go fight Goliath? How old was he when he fought the bear and the, and, and the lion? <laughs> David understood his job. David understood what he needed to do. It wasn't, oh, there goes another lamb. Nuts. Right? He knew, no, 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 no. I was put in charge of these sheep right here. These little baby lambs. And when someone tries to come and take them, I need to go get them. I'm not even there to kill the lion or the bear. I'm not even looking to fight them. I'm just re re returning what, what I needed to protect, right? So I went after the lion and the bear, and I smashed it in the head with my staff, right? So when this thing dropped the lamb, I got the lamb, but it says this, it rose against me. I don't know about y'all. But the first thing that runs through my head when a bear or a lion would, would come and steal, you know, make my dog, right? I might be thinking, okay, I got to do something. I don't, I don't really know what I need to do right now. My first thought is not run after the bear and the lion. Right? That's not my first thought. <laughs> I got to do something. I'm probably jumping like, Teresa, Teresa, <laughs> you got to get out of here. If she wasn't already, come on, help me out. I need Teresa. You know, the right? Grab the gun. We got to do something. There goes Lambo. That's our little dog's name. And David ran after the bear and ran after. They didn't have guns, man. He had his staff. Grabs his staff and smashes this bear or lion in the head just so that it would spit out and it would, he would protect the lamb. And David, he didn't. Okay, now I need to fight. He grabbed the lamb. It was to protect the lamb. And then it would it arose. And now he's like, look, just sit down right here. You just sit over here. I gotta take care of something right now. And he says, it arose against me. How many times things in our life, and obviously bears, lions, these physical things, they might not be physical attacks, but they're spiritual attacks. Yeah. And you confront them. Now wait a second, the word of God says, and it's like hitting a bee's nest with a baseball bat, right? I mean, for real. Yeah. Satan's not like, oh, no. They got the word of God. No, I'm done. I might as well quit. Might as well give up. No, this is what Satan does. He's pretty good at it. 
He's planned and he's prepared for what you have to bring at him. So he's going to try everything to get you to back down. But David didn't. David didn't back down. David said, no, 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 no. I've been put here with purpose. I've been put here with purpose. And he killed the lion and the bear. The kid killed a lion and a bear. The kid killed a lion and a bear. I can't imagine my son out. Dad, you can't imagine what I just did today. I took care of the sheep. You're going to be so proud of me. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. What? What? But this is where David's confidence level is at. Why? Because he took steps of faith. He didn't allow attacks to hinder him. He didn't allow attacks to bring him down. Why? Why do we as Christians allow Satan to bring us down to his level when God has lifted us up to his? This is what God has for us. He calls us kings and priests. Why would we bring ourselves down to a peasant level and live that way somebody? He's given us the measure of faith. He's given this to us. It's gifts. And if we're not utilizing the gifts that God has given to us, we're only bringing ourselves down. When God wants to bring us up. Let's move on. So this bear rose, or the lion rose up against me. I caught it by its beard. I struck it and killed it. David had a gift. Hallelujah. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, he's telling Saul. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. You see, David understood the power of God. You, you just don't come against God. You just don't come against God. Satan's going to try and try and try and try. Satan understood, oh, no, 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 no. No weapon formed against us prospers. Nothing. And those, those are just lies. Are you kidding me? That's silly. That's silly what he's trying to do. Trying to bully us? How dare he try to do that? Something rose up on the inside of him, this gift, this passion for who God called him to be. Verse 37 says, Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, the Lord be with you. Now I want to point something out to you. Because if they were the armies of the living God, they lived and served God, didn't they? So why would a young boy... Allow that power to rise up on the inside of them and say, send me when there's a trained, specialized army out there to do so. Their eyes got off of who God called them to be, who he was, and started looking at the problem. Their focus was on, uh-oh, we have ourselves a problem. And they grabbed a hold of the problem rather than grabbed a hold of who God was. You see, they could have did the same thing that David did and said, how dare you defy the armies of the living God? Bring it on, buddy. Let's get this done right now. Right? right. But it took the faith of David, who took steps already in preparing against the bear, against the lion. So we see that David's brothers, they weren't focused. They were all over the place, right? And even when David came down, what, are you going to make fun of us? No, I'm here to help you out. What are you guys doing? What are you hiding for? What's wrong with you guys? Get your focus on God. Amen. When our focus is on God, it doesn't matter what happens around us. Nothing. It's going to be like Peter walking out on the water. Come on. I'm gonna t who says I'm going to take a step of faith on the water? Yeah. Defy the laws of gravity and physics all at the same time. I'm just going to stand on water. And he did it because his eyes were on Jesus. But as soon as they got off, he began to sink. The great thing is always to know that Jesus is right there. Of course we're going to make mistakes. Of course we're going to screw up. Of course we have inadequacies on the inside of us. We live in this fallen world, but I don't focus on that. I focus on who he is. He's going to lift me up. He's going to strengthen me. He's going to give me the wisdom that I need. Amen? I acknowledge him. So it says this. Verse 38. So Saul clothed David with his armor. And he put a bronze helmet on his head, and he also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk. 
That didn't work. For he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I can't walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took it all off, and he took his staff in his hand. He knew what he had and what he could do with it. And he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. You've got to imagine what Saul's thinking at this time. Okay, I'm going to let this kid just go out and die right now. Do you think he's smiling like, good boy, David, that a boy. <laughs> you don't need the sword or the spear. You don't need the, 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 the shield. You just go get those rocks, buddy. You got it. I mean, you, you got to be thinking, what? What are you doing? But David knew who his God was. Again, verse 40, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag and in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So when the Philistine came and began drawing near to David and the man who bore the shield went before him and, the when, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was only a youth, basically scoffed at him. Are you kidding me? What are you doing right now? Right? said, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, All right, come to me, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, with spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. It wasn't, oh, no, yeah, I got these five smooth stones, buddy. You better not, don't make me get to the fifth stone. You better leave right now. It wasn't in his ability. It wasn't in how great he was. It says, you defied the armies of the living God. You defied him. You put this on yourself. Verse 46 says, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Aren't you glad that God wants to show up and show off in your life? It's not to say, look how good you are. It's to show them how good he is. He says, all of Israel will know how good I am. Verse 47, that all his assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Yeah. Verse 48, and so it was, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Can you see this kid now running with all of his might? Talk about a step. Talk about a step of faith. Like I said, if I saw a bear or a lion come and take my dog, I'd kind of be jumping around a little bit and getting excited. Like, what do I grab the God tree? So that's... He ran. He ran. He ran. A lot of people see the problem. David saw what God was going to do. His eyes were fixated on his God. Can you imagine what David saw in that moment when he was running there? He didn't see the armies back there all ready to go, snarled up and ready to fight. He saw a mighty army yeah. right at his back, yeah. running alongside of him. He saw angels ascending and descending from heaven. He saw the potential that God had in store for his life. So he took that step of faith with full force. Yeah. God, this could be my life, but I'm doing it. This could be my life, my last day, my very last breath, but I'm running full steam ahead because I know who you got to press into him. David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Verse 49, then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and it struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of his sheath, and killed him, and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. When you take steps of faith, 
Man, the enemy's gonna flee a thousand ways, baby, when you take that step of faith. Hey, they're not backing down. Hey, they're running at us. Hey, what's going on here? What's going on here? And God will make a way where there seems to be no way. That's how much God loves us. Man, who's ready to take a step of faith today? Who's ready to jump in and just allow God to show off in your life? For God to be God. That's the step of faith he wants his church to take, that we need to be taken on a daily basis. Mm. Just as David took steps of faith to honor God, we too can overcome the attacks of the enemy as we take steps of faith. This is why I love Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. David is sharing this right now. I love this. He's actually sharing this right over his, own, his very own life. And this is who God wants me to be. This is how I've lived my life. He says this, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands on the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Who is God? Yeah, you're my strength. Who is God? Yeah, you're my prince of peace. Oh, who is God? Yeah, you're my joy. Yeah, God, you are. You are. You are. And that's where he fixed his eyes. He meditated on it day and night. Verse 3 says, he shall be like a tree. Why? Because David knew he was the tree. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf, although it doesn't wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. David knew firsthand he was like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brought forth fruit in season. He knew his leaf didn't wither and everything he put his hands to do prospers because he lived it. He took the steps of faith to live it. Now, was David perfect? Absolutely not. Oh, no, 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 no. David was not perfect by, by any means. He screwed up. He made mistakes. He, more, he made poor choices. Hmm. But I remember reading back in Samuel chapter 13 that God called David a man after his own heart. So even though we might screw up, we might stumble a time or two, the trick is to get back up. The trick is to continue to show up. To allow faith to move through you. To allow the power of God to rise up and flow through you. It's not to bombard yourself, but I'm just no good. But I'm just not good enough. But I'm just not good at that. Well, use the gift that God's given you. I just don't have any gifts. I don't see. Well, start by doing something. Right. Do something. Show up. Show up for God. We show up. He shows off. It's that simple. We show up. He shows off. Again, it's not our ability, and even if we did have an ability, it's because he's given us gifts. It's all about him. It's all about him. I am nothing. He is everything. And man, the more we can get that into our head, the more we can just run after it like David did. The more we can just run after it and press through. And we press through until God breaks through Amen. where he makes a way where we might not physically see it. So here we are again, back in Hebrews chapter 11, right? Now faith is. Now faith is. Here we are again, family. Here we are again, learning how to activate faith in our life. How to allow faith to catapult us to truly rule and reign as kings and priests in this land, not in the sweet by and by. God wants us to be this way right here, right now. So I wanted to encourage you with that story of David and to just run at the promises of God. Run and pursue him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Here we are moving along. Verse 2. For by it, by what? By faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. How did the elders obtain a good testimony? Steps of faith. Steps of faith. The word obtained in the Webster's Dictionary is this. To gain or attain by planned action or effort. You mean i got to put effort into this? Yes. 
Yes, like I shared in the beginning, just showing up is a good first step. But now it's all right, God, I'm here. What do you need me to do next? Just pursue him. Press into him. Know who he is. The elders here, and that's why they call this the Hall of Fame of Faith, right? They go over all these magnificent people we read about in the Bible that did magnificent things. It says, by it, these elders obtained a good testimony. Verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which were, are visible. God spoke it into existence, didn't he? By faith. He just, God spoke and poof. Said light be. Poof. There it was. God spoke the worlds. Poof. There it was. Amen. God showed us the way. We speak it into existence. Maybe a message for another time. Faith speaks. Amen. We speak it into existence. Verse 4 says, by faith, here we go, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained, there's that word again, he obtained, he, he didn't just sit back and like, all right, I'm going to twiddle my thumb, see what's on TV, see what's going on online, didn't think, oh, I have all this other stuff to do, he obtained, he obtained, gained. Attained by planned action and effort. By faith, Abel offered, a more, uh, offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. And we know that story, right? Cain and Abel. Cain gave God all of the works of his hands. Look at this, Lord. I made this for you. Look at the size of these carrots. Check a look at this corn over here. All of this by the hard work of my hands. Look at what I did for you, Lord. And Abel just said, Lord, I thank you that you provide for me. I thank you for your provision and, and who you are. It's again fixing our eyes on who he is. And because of this, it was accounted to him as righteous. Verse 5 says, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. You don't hear much of Enoch, do you? Not a lot of teachings on Enoch. I'm not going to continue to go into any more Enoch, but faith was taken away. Uh, it says that by faith Enoch was taken away. What do you mean taken away? So that he didn't see death. Like just poof, he was, God took him from the earth. He didn't have to go through any pain. No, he just didn't see death. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was, he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And we see in the very next verse that without faith it's impossible to please God. So what did he not have? Faith. He knew who his God was. He ran to his God. Again, you don't hear, it's not a huge, super great story, but he chose to live by faith. And that's what pleases God. He's in the Hall of Fame of Faith because of it. We need to be running in and pursuing God by faith. Verse 6, read it out loud with me, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. Aren't you glad? God shows off. We show up, God shows off. And as I said before, we yes, we might make mistakes. We might screw up. But all we have to do is say, God, forgive me. I repent. I don't want to continue screwing up and making mistakes. Teach me your ways, O oh yes. Lord. That's why we're here today, so we can learn and we can grow and we can build and the, advance the kingdom of God and allow God to be God in our life. This is how David became the man after God's own heart, right? Through trials. Man, through stuff that he did not do well at. But he continued to press in and seek God. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 15 says this, But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, verse 10, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name. I love that. What a promise. God doesn't forget. God doesn't he, he didn't accidentally miss it and you need to do it again. God sees everything. He sees your heart. He sees you taking steps of faith. He sees you taking opportunities and he rewards that faith. 
It says, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. That's continually, a continual process until the Lord takes us. We do minister. Verse 11. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless you. Read this out loud with me, verse 14, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promises. He attained, he worked hard after, he put effort into receiving the promises. That wasn't even his goal. His goal was just to honor his king, just to bless the Lord. Our focus needs to be on him and then apply what God tells us to do every day, every single day. And I love the promise in blessing, he's going to bless us. In multiplying, he's going to multiply. So what do I need to do? I need to be a blessing everywhere I go. Because in blessing, God blesses. And in multiplying, God multiplies. We need to be like David, just running. Just running full force with our, our, our mind focused on who God is. Knowing that if God had called me, who can successfully come against me? Who can stop what God has already blessed and given authority by his son, Jesus Christ. And that you have ministered to the saints. You know that word minister there is just serve. As we serve our king. As we serve the Lord. When we show up, we're saying that we're willing to do what's asked of us. When we show up, it's a step of faith that God can work with. Amen? Amen. One last scripture verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. It's a very familiar scripture verse. Let's go ahead and read this aloud together. It says this. So now, beloved ones, stand firm, stable, and enduring. Live your lives with an unshakable confidence. We know that we prosper and excel in every season by serving the Lord. Because we are assured that our union with the Lord makes our labor productive with fruit that endures. I want to leave you with that promise today. I want to leave you with that promise to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that your labor isn't in vain. It does not go unnoticed because Jesus recognizes faith. So let's take steps of faith today. You might be in here today and God's sharing with you some things He's reactivating some things that he's asked of you. And you're thinking, boy, I kind of missed the mark on that one. I may not have given the effort that I needed to, the way Pastor Paul has just been sharing with us, the way David pursued and just ran with absolutely zero inhibition, no worry, just going for it, knowing who the army he had behind him. That might be you in here today. It's all right. We all miss the mark at times. The best thing to do is, God forgive me. Help me pursue you in a greater way. Help me to see you in a greater way, not the problems that I have been focusing on. So with every head bowed, every eye closed all over this place, that might be you, and I don't need to single anybody out. Like I said, we all screw up. We all make mistakes. That might be you listening online today. God wants to do great things for your life. It's his promises. It's his promises. <laughs> So let's just go before him right now. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We're so grateful, Jesus, for what you have done for us on the cross. How you were bruised for our iniquities, Lord God. You took on all of our sin, all of our shame. Lord God, and now we have salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. And as he died for us, we choose to live for him. Not just in word, but in deed as well. God, I know you're asking things of us. And I just ask right now that you elevate this church's faith. You take us to a greater level. Lord God, you, you, you shine your face upon us 
in a greater way. We know, Lord God, that you've given us the measure of faith. I just ask that you help us to uh, continue to grow in our faith, to mature in our faith, to, to continue to take steps of faith that honor and please you. I declare right now any bombardment over this these precious people right now as they have taken steps of faith. I declare any uh, demonic force of the enemy right now that is trying to fixate their mind, their thoughts on the enemy and all of the bad. I declare right now that that be wiped away in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I declare eyes now to be fixated on the power of a loving God. On the miraculous working power. The blood of Jesus Christ at work within us. We fix our eyes upon you, Jesus. We ask that you forgive us. We repent right now. Lord God, that you change us. Change our ways. Change our thought process. Change our heart. That we don't look past opportunities, but we take and make opportunities. Father, that you recognize the steps of faith. And I thank you for your power at work within your church. That when we lay hands on the sick, they recover, not because we're somebody special, but because you're a loving God. God, that when we lift up our families in prayer, you're revealing it to us, Lord God, quickly. Father, help us to be sons and daughters of faith. Kings and priests of faith. Faith in you, in your ability, your power, your might, your love, your strength, your joy, your peace. We thank you that with God all things are possible. So today, Lord God, we choose to leave this building and to go out and be the church you've called us to be, taking steps of faith every day. And I just thank you that you are blessing your people. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we are saved.